Hey, it's Judy Pfeiffer. Happy Pfeiffer Focus. What is this? This is a podcast through the eyes of a realtor. We're doing a different perspective on things. And today I have, and I'm really excited, I have a guest, George Romero. George and I are going to discuss champagne. Champagne is one of those things that, you know, uh, when you buy or sell a house, those realtors like to give champagne. But do you know anything about champagne? I have my friend here to share that with us today. A quick market minute, I will share with you. Rates are still in the low sixes, and there are some more new listings coming back on the market. So let me know if I can help you with that. In the meantime, George, talk to us, George Romero, talk to us about champagne. Look at these beautiful bottles. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, first, Happy New Year. I Thank think it's, you. Uh, it's uh, great to be here. I think there's lots of, of uh, question where we're going in our market, but I think for those of us, we think that this is going to be just a great year. And you, you talked about it. I think uh, what a great gift for your buyers or sellers, right? And I think agents tr do a lot of this. I think this is one of these ones that's really good to have just a little bit more knowledge because I think everybody thinks they're giving away champagne. And I would say 90% of the gifts that are given are not champagne. They're sparkling wine. No kidding. Right? Yep, absolutely. So champagne, bottom line, where do you get champagne? One area in the world. It's called the, the Champagne region in France. If it's not grown there, it isn't champagne. Okay. Bottom line. Kind of like uh, in Hawaii with coffee. Totally. You can only get Kona coffee in like six square miles. Of... Totally. Okay. Napa Valley, mm -hmm. you can only get Napa wines in Napa Valley, California. Can't okay. get anywhere else, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very similar. I think it's one of those easy ones that many people forget, don't even know, and, and miss it a lot. Um, I think other parts of the world are, are creating the champagne, quote unquote, sparkling wine, very similar. There's a couple great big regions. Italy does a lot of it. Theirs is called Prosecco. Basically the same. We'll talk a little bit about the difference. The north, the West Coast here in, Cali in California, or Oregon, Washington, they do a... a Sparkling wine as well, right? The varietals are different. Um, in, in France, you can only do a few different varietals. In the rest of the world, most everybody does different kinds of things. Um, you can talk about rosé. How do you make a rosé? It's pretty easy, right? You actually just have a little bleed off usually of some red wines and some of those grapes. So what do you have here? So we got a couple different things. We got we got a, a Spanish cava, which is is made traditional. It is very much a sparkling wine. We've got one here that's that is French, that is one of my favorites. I've had for about twenty five years. It's a Krug Champagne. It kind of goes right up there in the world of the Bollingers and and uh, uh, Dom Perignons. Uh, we also have. No, go ahead. Okay, so here, I, so this is sparkling wine. All of that is sparkling All wine. All of right these here. are sparkling wine. That and is champagne. And this is really a champagne. 100%. And it comes from the champagne area of France. 100% right Got off. it. And Got I it. think just a couple little things, if you take nothing away from today, if you can take it to your clients, if you take it to your buyer sellers, just a couple little fun things. It's not like this is better than these either. There's some taste preferences, right? Right. All right. So real quick, let's go. Let's talk about the the taste preferences. Please. Because uh, again, these are pretty bottles. I might, as a consumer, just want to go and find the the big one or the pretty one. So can you explain them real quick? To me? Yeah, totally. So I, I think really what you're getting to Spanish cava, the prosecco from Italy, and basically a representation of the the wines that are done on the, the west coast. All these are done very similar, okay? The thing that sets out champagne a little bit differently, okay. okay? They have a secondary fermentation, which most other champagnes or sparkling wines do not have. That secondary fermentation actually happens right in this bottle. Okay. Most of the rest of the world doesn't do a secondary fermentation in the bottle. Okay. They do a first fermentation in a big steel vat, okay? Makes the bubbles a little bigger, makes the wine typically a touch sweeter, that's why this usually costs more. There's, okay. a, there's a lot two of- Two fermentation process. Two fermentation process and lots of labor to make that second. So the way that this ends up getting is they put it into what they call a riddling rack. And it's up at a degree like this. And every so many days, a, a gentleman or a young lady come around and twist it about an eighth of a turn. Wow. Eighth of a turn. And there's racks and racks and racks and racks of them. That's a pretty tedious job. Totally. This never mm -hmm. That never happens in these. Okay. Right? Doesn't happen. So these just are 
prepared and then put in the bottle. Put in the bottle. There's and nothing else that's the done door out they the go. door in the in the shipper in, okay. in our houses. This one will sit in the in the cellars for a long time. It just kind of depends. Like this one probably sat in the cellar for two or three years. Okay. Never came out. All right. Yeah. All right. Any any other differences? So you know, I, I think you're talking about sparkling wine, right? And I think you are talking about preferences. If you want to get into the Italians, they do a spumante a lot of times. It does become sweeter. There are degrees of sweetness. There are degrees of dryness. Usually, your French traditional champagnes are going to typically be some of your driest and some of your biggest savory kind of wines, and also very very yeasty. Um, for a lot of people's palate, including mine, this is not usually my go-to. It's just very big and bold. I'm not as big of a white wine person myself either, um, but this is big and bold. Sometimes these are a little bit less in the acidity. Okay. It takes that down a little bit. Prosecco versus Brut. Is it so Brut? So all have a Brut, basically. Brut is usually your driest. There is some zero dry, but usually when you talk about mass market, Brut is your driest out there. Then you go to an extra dry, you're thinking that should be drier. It's not. It's kind of the wine huh. world having some fun with this, I think. Okay. But Brut is typically your driest. Okay? All right. You get All in right. Moscatos and some of these other things that are kind of variations of this now, um, and you start picking up a lot more sweetness. Okay. Brut's dry, Prosecco. It's still basically a Brut in style as well, okay. most of them. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. kind of synonymous. Similar. Very similar. Yeah. Okay. All it's right. just you're going to have some great varietals that are a little different. You are going to have some aging of that. You're going to how much pre I mean, we can get into the geekiness of it all, but I think really the big thing for you guys and gals today is that genuinely think about this. It is sparkling wine. If you do go and you really know that this client and they deserve it and that you want to get them a champagne, you know they're wine drinkers, then promote it. This is champagne that we bought you today. Champagne in France and it from? In, from, the fr from the champagne region in France, 100%. Okay. Prosecco is Italy, right? Cava is Spain. Everywhere else, basically, is sparkling wine. And these are sparkling wines, too, but they are, but you're not going to get a Prosecco from okay. anywhere else in the world either besides Italy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Great. Thank you for being here, George. I am so, so appreciative. Absolutely. And I hope our viewers and I have learned some things here today. And I always love to end the show with a closeout quote. Do you have a closeout quote, George? You know, I, I, I do. I've always kind of leaned on the one from uh, Henry Ford. You know, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. But I also have just recently found one from Albert Einstein that uh, only a life lived for others is a life worthwhile. And that one really seems to hit me for this year in 2023. Great. So, yeah, thank you. Nice. Well, thank you for being here. Absolutely. Really, really appreciate it. And again, Thank you so much, my viewers and listeners, for watching Pfeiffer Focus. Until the next episode, thanks for watching.